Hey everyone, this is Sean Paul Seth, Head of Partnerships here at Wedge HR, I'm bringing to you live another Wedge Chatter episode. Today I'm super excited because I get to bring on one of my friends, but also um, someone who has expertise in both the recruitment technology and sales space. So selfishly, uh, a background that I come in as well. So we're going to have a great discussion about the parallels between both recruiters and recruitment and modern day sales and how many parallels there are, are there differences and what recruiters can really do to level up to, to be that modern recruiter because it's harder than ever. Um, so super excited. We have Michael Novi here from Tauru, um, a friend. Um, hey, Michael, what's happening? Sean, good to be here. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. And I was just talking about um, us both uh, selfishly having a background both in sales, but also selling to recruitment. So we have a very unique way to um, approach talking to recruiters. Now, before we get started, um, I did want to maybe do just a quick intro on your end. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, it's amazing how the world works. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you and I met, what, six, seven months ago at the, uh, the Greenhouse Conference. And then, mm-hmm. you know, our, path, our paths are here and now we're working together. So uh, excited about the future. But uh, born and raised in the Northeast, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Moved to uh, the Philadelphia area when I was, what, 15, 16? And then I actually relocated to the Austin, uh, Texas area where Tauru is headquartered, uh, basically really this time last year. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's almost coming up to that one year anniversary, but, uh, grateful and, uh, a a true blessing for sure. Absolutely. Um, now I will warn everyone, we're not going to talk about our golf swing on this one per se, but Thank that's but first, that's... And for, first and foremost, that's, I have a leg up on you. I mean, you, you see, Oh, I'm going this way. You see my guy right there, you know, yeah. uh, the, the goat, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get out there. Well, I'm gonna we'll, have to, we'll, I'll have to give you, I'll have to give you a few strokes here and there, but we'll be all right. We'll have to save that for another, uh, another time. But, um, and I did want to start off. So, Having extensive sales background, Michael, I know um, being a sales leader, a partner leader um, Mm -hmm. at a recruitment technology company, that's quite innovative um, and selling to a a, a specific recruitment solution. How has this helped um, when you connect with talent acquisition and recruiters? Because the whole um, thing is that there are so many parallels between what a recruiter has to do every day and and a salesperson. Um, so both you and I are uniquely positioned, um, to understand kind of the, the day in the life of a recruiter, but I wanted to to kind of get your two cents on how you, um, how you come to the table and how you can relate to the recruiters on the front and having that sales background and, uh, over the years, I think, and Sean, I'm going to moonwalk back just to give the the viewers an overview of my, of my background. For sure. Uh, I, I, I was a men's stylist for four yeah, almost four or five years. And that was really the first in terms of the full sales role, uh, yeah. starting, starting clothing. And that simply taught me knowledge, right? Uh, if an individuals or buyers are spending, you know, five, 10, 15, $20,000 on clothes, it, well, why is that? Why are the clothes so expensive? So mm-hmm. that was kind of the foundation transition to more of the HR recruiting realm, uh, more of the consulting role uh working in the L and D human capital realm, uh, yeah. then transition into the the background screening and assessment. So learning the nuances of HR and TA from the the inside moving outward right. was it was extremely key uh considering the recruiting space uh being in that every single day yeah and and knowing what the the recruiters go for go go through. Yeah, uh, and and secondly, uh, my sister uh, gratefully works for Apex Systems, you know, IT staffing form. So yep. I know what she goes through. Uh, you know, working at home during the pandemic, I I felt like I could pitch Apex because I hear yeah. I could I, I I could hear her riff. But yeah. uh, just being in the you know in the trenches, quite honestly, knowing what the recruiters go through, understanding how. Over the years of my of my experience, knowing how all the systems speak to each other, mm-hmm. right? You got the job boards and you have the platforms, and then you know ultimately they need to go into the applicant tracking systems, 
the assessment, the pre-hire companies, yeah. uh, the, the, the attraction engines. So knowing the full landscape, uh, that, that is extremely important uh, in recruiting because I think you and me both would agree recruiting has definitely evolved over the last two to three years due to the pandemic and what has, was, what has transpired. Uh, and secondly, recruiting and talent acquisition is con- continually to, to change and to adapt. Um, yeah. There's always a new bright, you know, shining whistle per se, but uh, hopefully that, that was a good segue. Um, hopefully that was helpful. No, hundred percent, Michael. And I know over the past couple of years with the pandemic, COVID, um, things have quite, uh, quite changed in terms of the recruitment landscape. So how recruiters can position their companies, what, they, what can they do to stand out? Um, mm-hmm. And I think that is a very similar parallel to what salespeople have to do day in and day out. There's so much noise out there that how can you stand out in that sea of sameness? Or like you said, there's a bright, new, shiny object there. What, what's, what are the differences? Um, how do you differentiate? Um, why is it relevant now? Like there's so many cool parallels. Um, I, um, I, I, I think with right now there is in recruiting and TA mm-hmm. everyone's going through, I, I'm going to use a general term pain, right? What's the pain yeah. Yeah. when you're, yeah. when you're speak, when, when you're speaking to a customer, uh, you know, you, you, you got to dig deep. You got to ask the qualifying questions. You got to find the pain. Uh, I'm a firm believer in, you know, this, I learned this lesson when I was about 19, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Selling is a tool and a technique, of course, but when you're selling, if you feel like you're, if you're, you're convincing, then you're, then you're really not doing your job. Right. right. Selling in my opinion is finding a, finding, finding the issue, finding the problem and then providing the solution. Mm -hmm. I want, I want customers, clients, you know, generally, in my opinion, if you do it the right and proper way, they're thanking you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and that's the, and that's the, the, the magic right there. Uh, you know, and that, that I learned that when I was in clothes uh, as a, as a stylist, you know, ask the right yeah. questions, um, qualifying. i learned that clients and prospects, if you ask the right questions, Sean, they're always going to lead you into the right direction. Mm-hmm. Just as a sales individual or recruiter, it's your job to, to be knowledgeable and to and to ask the right appropriate questions, you know, um, yeah. if you, if you do that, um, you know, then it's a perfect, it's a perfect, perfect match. hundred percent. Um, and at the end of the day, be interested, be curious. Mm-hmm. A lot of people forget that. Do you want to be interested in their business? It's never about you. It's mm-hmm. always about them. So hang up your hat of ego or, or whatever, and, and think about, What's, what's, what's really important to them? Why would they change now? What's the impact if they don't change? All of those super important. Um, I know you've led sales teams before. Um, for sure. And what would you say some of the qualities you've seen, if I'm a salesperson, but also working with the recruitment teams as well, has been the most um, effective in this day and age? And what are those parallels between the recruiter qualities and a successful salesperson in today's uh, realm? Uh, well, in recruiters, I mean, you, you have it straight. I mean, it's, that process is simple, right? You have mm-hmm. the, the, the target audience, you have the applications, you have the qualified applicants, mm-hmm. uh, leading to interviews and offers, and then ultimately hired. Yeah. Translate that to sales, it's the same the same map, yeah. Just di- just different terminology, right? right? You have you right. have the you have the leads, you have the prospects. Uh, then you have the <laughs> you have the prospects that will turn into the the qualified leads, yeah. Leading into sales qualified leads, and then opportunities, and then you know, boom. Then we got the customers. So, yeah. it's the same. It's the same map. Uh, so the 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 traits from recruiters to sales, it's the same. Same workflow, just a yeah. different, ter- different, just different terminologies. You gotta do. You gotta prospect. Yeah. You gotta hold the, the discovery. You gotta hold the demo. Then you're going to proposal and MSA sent. Then mm-hmm. you're closing the deal. Then if you're involved with the implementation team, 
boom, you're off and running, getting it live. So it's that proper workflow, follow-ups, yeah. organization, okay? Yeah. Daily tasks. Uh, you, if you figure out a process, yeah. right? In my opinion, scheduling and time management is, is, is extremely important. Oh, yeah. To me, if individuals do not come to, to, to work uh, that next day and they don't have a schedule, they're behind the eight ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go into my workflow because I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, I've always yeah. been regimented. I've, I've always seen regimented. it and I don't, I'm, yeah, uh, it gives me anxiety looking at it. You now, see, you're putting, you're putting me on the spot now. You're making me red and, I'm, and it's not my, t- <laughs> it's not my tan. Uh, no, I, I think scheduling and time management, where, where should you focus your time? Uh, are you doing your reach outs from 10 to 12? Are you doing your admin work in the morning? Are you doing your demo calls and your, your candidate engagement, yeah, yeah, right? Checking yeah. up on offers in the afternoon. You, you have to develop a workflow. Now, I will say, if your workflow isn't leading to results, you know, in two to three months, then you gotta, then you gotta change. But mm-hmm. I think it's, it's the workflow, uh, being organized, have a process, right? Have a system of processes. Yeah, that's that's extremely key, and I and I think those are the those are parallels when you look at sales and recruiting for sure. Yeah, you know what? I didn't even think of that in terms of the workflows and just the terminology changing. It's 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 the same. You have a funnel. You're out there looking for opportunities or you're looking for people to fill a role. Yeah. And, um, and one last tidbit, if you yeah. think about it. There's some staffing organizations that you have the sourcing and then the recruiters, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, I can find the people, I can find the individuals, I can find the Sean's of the world, yeah. but then it's my job to sell Sean to the hiring manager. Right. Why, why should the hiring manager interview Sean? Exactly. So I'm not selling a product, selling, selling a resume, I'm selling a candidate. So it's the same, it's the same principles. Recruiters are sales folks. You, you, and you, yeah. they, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the, th- <laughs> the thing that I would say this is that, you know, products don't have minds. Mm-hmm. You know, my, I'll, I'll use my, 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 my sister, for example. Yeah. You, spend all, you spend all that time with a candidate and then you get to the offer stage and then they decline and go to a, they accept another role. So yep. think it's about like going that. to a competitor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Think about the time that a recruiter invests into that candidate, into that yeah. hiring process. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, it might not happen. Right. Same thing in sales. You might be chasing a huge whale of an opportunity. You get to the, the final stages and then boom, they decide to go with another competitor. So it's, yeah. it's the, the ebbs and flows are the same. Um, yeah, no, a hundred percent. I was thinking about things that make, um, recruiters really effective. You've had conversations with recruiters for jobs, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and I came across storytelling and I think it's a very underrated skill, um, to be an effective storyteller in sales, I would say, but also on the recruitment side, understanding their business enough to tell that story that is very exciting, particularly if they're out there sourcing for people, which is really tough. In this right. climate, in this market right now, people are dropping like flies or they're going to another competitor. Like it is a tough market for sourcers um, and finding qualified talent. Um, but being an effective storyteller, um, I've seen on the sales side be super uh, effective, but also having conversations with that's that's the most compelling thing about recruitment. They can tell mm-hmm. that story of that role, someone who's just been in that role that I'm applying to, someone, that culture of the company. How did it start? What did, What is this? What are they doing this year, right? So that communication on the story side of things, I think is an underrated skill, both on the recruitment side, but of course sales right. too. Um, but wanted to get your thoughts on that. I think it's, you know, coming in sales and I've always looked at it is when you're in a sales organization yeah, and when you're, when you're selling a product, yeah, you're just not competing with, you know, the 40 AEs, of your peers, right? You're, you're not, I mean, I'm, I'm calling the same, same folks that other companies are calling. Yeah. So how can Michael Novi be different? How can Michael mm-hmm. stand out? Yeah. Right. Cause I, when I leave a voicemail or I, when I send an email or 
you know, when I say, when I, when I do something, I want that client. Well, darn, I, that Michael stand that he's different. You know, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you a, a, a tidbit here. Uh, the organization tell that I, that I, that I'm at, and, you know, wouldn't want it, wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah. Uh, you know, two years uh, in September, I was the fourth, I think I was the fourth AE on the yeah. floor. Yeah. So it's been a true blessing. Uh, you yep. know, I'm in different, different position now, you know, now. And uh, I am um, in COVID, you know, yeah. Uh, during, during COVID, uh, you know, transitioned into a, uh, another organization. I uh, got introduced to uh, Thad Price, our CEO, yeah. uh, via mutual connection, started interviewing. And again, that was when that time was, they don't know when they were going to hire, you know, timing because organizations were, you know, on, on pause. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm laughing as I speak about it. Mm-hmm. When I was on LinkedIn, you know, marketing, right? Yeah. So when, when, you, when you're interviewing with an organization, you start getting the, the marketing. Oh, yeah. Right? So, oh, yeah. So, kudos, so kudos to our marketing department at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw this work from home dance video. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, this seems very culture oriented yeah. and you know, very cool. And uh, <laughs> I sent a follow up to my sales leader at the time, you know, hey, remain very interested, you know, respectively, top of my list, blah, 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 cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end, I, I said, I attach, hey, I saw your guys work from home dance video. I've attached a few clips of my own. Yeah. And as my idol always says, don't stop to get enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now I didn't hear anything for two weeks. I was a little bit nervous. Okay. I was a little bit nervous. Now I'm a, I'm a diehard MJ fan, you know, King of pop, you know, yeah. bread, bread and thin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I sent a few clips of myself dancing when I was uh, uh, you know, a little bit younger. Wow. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, boom. Yeah, so yeah. long story short, where I'm going with this is there's not going to be a other, another individual or, or a different story along the lines of that. When, I joined the organization. My the way I'm interpreted now is when individuals or uh, uh, colleagues know yeah. my story. I, I, I moonwalked into Talru. Yeah. Right. So that that was my way of well, hey, this is what you're gonna get. Okay, I'm I'm different. I'm in a different lane. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. creative. Uh, I've always and that's how I've always approached things. You yeah. have to set yourself apart from the other, from the other folks. And, you, and in my opinion, if you're not taking risks, you're behind the eight ball. Yep. Right. If you're not changing, uh, then you're not evolving. And I've always, and I've always believed that, you know, take risks. Um, everyone's going to fail. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. but in order to fail, that means that's a, you're making progress. And that's the type of storytelling. So when I go on calls, when I do demos, when I have meetings, yeah, you, you, and I've never been one to. I can't follow a, a script. I need, I need, I need personality. I need my personalization oh, yeah. skills. Right. I'm, I'm constant. Okay. And mm-hmm. that's just the way I've my personality, and that's how I've always been. Mm-hmm. So storytelling is extremely key, Sean. Yeah. Uh, you got to have a story. You got to have context. Lead with value, right? Yeah. Lead with lead with the value. Uh, lead with a value proposition. You know, and 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 also too, make it make it your own. Yeah, make it your own. Oh, uh, yeah. Exactly the way I say something. You know, Sean's going to say something totally different. You know, mm-hmm. it, 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 you can't you can't have that boom 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 boom. You know, you got to make it your own. You got to make it work for you and. You know, the storytelling, in my opinion, is is, is an extremely important uh, trait yeah. and differentiator of the individuals that are in another that are in another lane. Hundred so, percent. See, now now you have proof on me that I can moonwalk. You know, now now. now. Well, well, I haven't <laughs> be, we got. I haven't gone, seen got, that video uh, yet, so but I don't know okay. if I had the privilege. Of, it's, of, there. Uh, <laughs> it's there. It's there. It's oh, it's there. Trust me. It's there. Uh, I am definitely, I, now I feel obliged to check it out. Um, and then I'll send you a little LinkedIn um, message after making fun of you. Oh, God. Um, I'm, but I'm, I'm scared. I, <laughs> I do appreciate that. You, you know what? It sounds like you have the word called grit 
um, in terms of yeah. you have to go, you have to take risks. You have to keep pushing forward. You have to be every, the way you do something. And to, to your point, and I do it, it's going to be completely different, but it may be the same kind of point that we're getting across the same mm -hmm. um, value, you know, um, and storytelling, like you had just said that the story is awesome, by the way, I know, I see what you did there. Uh, um, I think was, um, will help you differentiate. And there's so many, um, because the recruitment space, recruitment technology space in particular, the, the, the industry that you and I have been in for many years, um, there is just so many different technologies out there. How can you differentiate right. if I'm, if I'm reaching out is, is through storytelling, telling your story, telling the company story, understanding how that story is going to be or fill that void or fill that gap for them right. that they're looking for. That's solution specifically. Now, um, in turn, I, I wanted to pivot a little bit and, and, and talk about yeah. if I go on LinkedIn right now, and I know that you follow a bunch of sales leaders and, and, and everything like that. All yeah. I see yeah. is different types of sales training, sales gurus, sales, yeah. whatever, selling them stuff to you, telling this is how, what you have to do with those kind of gapped, like I have a line and then a couple gaps and then a line, you know, I know you've seen it. Like <laughs> yeah. That. Um, yeah. But you don't see a lot of training and, and, and I follow a lot of recruiters and I've been in the talent space for five, six years, a lot of training and how, how recruiters can level up. Like there just isn't the same. Yeah. There's so many parallels that we've covered, but there doesn't seem to be the same level of investment for recruiters who quite frankly are um, the gatekeepers of a company. So they are so crucial, particularly in a labor market like today. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just not the same level of training out there, which I find right. very bizarre. And maybe I'm looking in the wrong areas, um, but it's just not on the same level as sales. Sales, there's too much. So the recruiter, there's too little. But why don't right. you get your, um, your well, feedback on that? If you, all right, let's, let's break that down. So if you have recruiters that are in staffing, simple, simple staffing, and yeah. then you have recruiters for, an or, for an organization. Right. Right. There's, and again, I'm, I'm going back to my, you know, my teachings. Mm -hmm. When I, when I started in clothing, I was a, you know, young kid, didn't know, didn't know anything. Yeah. Okay. And it was very high end. And I remember there was, there was some customers that would, that I would have, and I didn't know the answer to the questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know what pick stitching was. I didn't know what a, you know, five inch out seam and, you know, all belt loops and constructing of the, of the garments yeah. and how they were made and wool counts and, and all that jazz. Yeah. And it dawned on me that when I didn't know those answers to those questions, I immediately lost value and trust in a client or a prospect. Mm -hmm. So that immediately told me that I need to know knowledge. I, I, I need to know all this. Right. Right. And that kind of really has stuck with me throughout legitimately every position. Yep. Uh, so I, I am comfortable to say that when I go to these conferences, I'm not, yes, I have a, I have a, I have a job. Yeah. Right. But I'm doing it to get, more exposure and to see what what's actually happening in the space mm -hmm. right hr tech just completed in september you and yeah. i were there yeah i every year i go through the startup pavilion because i i i want to see what what's going to be happening in the next four to six years mm -hmm. right or in that interest yeah. exactly you know four to six years i'm looking long term but more importantly maybe in the next year or so right yeah. so it's it's the knowledge and the and the landscape, okay. Yeah. Forget about your product, right? Yeah. I want to know the ISIMs interfacing. I want to know the UKGs and the work days. I want I want to be able to know what what is their product. There's yeah. a difference between knowing the product and then actually knowing how the product works. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My competitors, I like to think I, I know them very well in terms of you know how they go to market, and again. Mm -hmm. Everyone, everyone has their own, has their own value prop, which is perfectly fine. Yeah. But again, it's just the knowledge level of how does every system talk to each other? What are the nuances? What are the differentiators? Mm -hmm. How do they go to market? How are right. they selling and pitching to their customers? That's extremely key because if you don't know what, you know, your next door neighbor is doing in terms of they're calling the same person, yeah. right? They're, they're calling the same 
same candidate or the same HR buyer. Yeah. Well, what are they saying? How am I? Because again, competitive. You got it. You got to be ahead of the game. So, Sean, I, yeah. and I know that's a loaded, a loaded statement, yeah. but quite frankly, it's just knowledge of the landscape. How is every ind- How is every company, every product, evolving, going to market, pitching? Uh, how do they? How are they competing against you? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just having a finger on the pulse. All right. Now take it a step further. Recruiters for an organization, knowing the the behind the scenes details. Yeah. Knowing, you know, what is the candidate experience like? Yeah. What is what's the candidate engagement? Uh, how can you better the application process? Uh, yeah. What innovative platforms are out there? Be, you know, uh, recommend, right? Yeah. Have a finger on the pulse. Change, change. Show initiative. Yeah. So knowing knowing your process, just not recruit. You know, if your average time to hire is eighty five years, and you know <laughs> your competitor is two minutes, well, no wonder you're not getting any hires. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and again, that's I that was a a large example, but you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Um, I think knowing the knowing your own process in terms of you know internally is yeah. extremely key, yeah. and um, if you know that, then you can make make good recommendations on the on the data and anal- analyzed for sure yeah um a lot of great points there um yeah once again going back to the on the recruitment side they have to be self-starters they have to know their own processes they have to know their own technology they have to know what other technologies and what other people are using to make their job a little easier if i'm let's say a corporate rec- uh, recruiter in a big organization right for sure. Um, what are candidates saying about us? What do other people mm-hmm. think about us? All of this is important. And this information is, mind you, it's very easy to find information through podcasts, webinars, such as this, you, you name it. There are 5 million different HR newsletters. You know, like there are ways you can level up and find information out there um, and also get yeah. feedback through candidates. Like there's there's tons of great technologies to do that too. So I think we're in a level of, in, you can go up there and level up through um, technologies and information and what's out there. But now the problem is what you can sift and sort to focus on what's the most relevant to you so you can level up in the right way. Because there mm-hmm. is a lot of noise out there when it comes to technologies. There is a lot of noise when um, HR experts are saying you should be doing this or this is what's helpful for recruitment. Like there is a lot, um, but you have to find what works for you um, and you have to have that grit to your point, Michael, I know. I, and, and one last nugget here, I, and Sean, with, when you look at recruiting and sales, mm-hmm. right, uh, I think expectations setting is also crucial, Yeah. right? When you look at the, the recruiter side, you know, you set, you set expectations in the beginning and with the, yeah. with the, with the client, what's realistic or not. And the same thing in sales, Right understanding their expectations. Hey, is this happening in Q4? Is this more of a Q1? You know, so you have proper expectations right there. Uh, recruiters, one, need to explain the market, quite honestly, because it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's much tougher now, you know, recently. Yeah. Uh, so, so timelines, recruiting candidates will be, quite honestly, much quicker. Yeah. Uh, asking flexibility around certain requirements, just understanding that process. So, Again, huge parallels to sales. Hundred percent. Huge parallels. Um, now, when you think of technologies that people are using today in terms mm. of outreach, even if recruiters are reaching out to candidates or salespeople are reaching out to potential prospects, what are you seeing there? And what are your thoughts on effective outreach and technologies um, where they may overlap? Because I have a couple that I'm thinking of, which you may be as well. Um, but I think in terms of that, there are a lot of great, um, tools that they can both use to help level up in those, in their positions. Well, you know, in terms of sales, I think, you know, you know, you got the sales engagement tools, you got the outreach of the world, you got the sales locked. Uh, so when I look at, when I look at sales engagement, 
you know, anything outbound prospecting for sales folks are generally yeah. going to be using, you know, the, the outreach and sales lofts. But then when you talk about engagement in a recruiting process, yeah, you got the, you got the, you got the chatbots of the world, right? You got the, right. you got, you got the pair. So it's the same thing. It's just, a, it's just a different, yeah. different type of engagement. Yeah. Then when you look at, you know, sales enablement, how can sales folks be better? Boom. You know, I think there's, there's one called gong. Right. Yeah, Gong, yeah, all that, yeah, all that yeah. audio recording. So when I have a call with Sean, how can I be better? Right. It will dissect that call. It will tell you, Hey, did, did Michael Novi talk too much? Yeah. <laughs> did I ask enough <laughs> questions? It's going to tell me what the heck I did wrong. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I can be better. And then when you look at the recruiting, well, you got all that video recording, right? You got the, you got the higher view of the world. You got the modern hires, you got all that video analytics. So it, yeah. it makes that recruiting process in terms of the automation much yeah. quicker. So yep. again, boom, boom, boom. Okay. Uh, then you have, what else you got? You got the email sequences, which we already talked about, the follow-up Talk me tasks. about video outreach. Ooh. You know, I've never, I've actually never, I've never videoed, I've never videoed myself and sent to a, a prospect. But, uh, but I will say, I get a few on LinkedIn. I get but, a few on but LinkedIn. But you did do a moonwalk video to sell yourself on a candidate through a recruitment process. I know. So, I know. hey, you know, um, I, I, I'm older now. I got, I got to stretch more. I got to yeah. stretch more when I, when I, when I, when I, when I do the moonwalk. But no, no I hear you. Well, well, think about it, right? If you go, take it a step further. When Michael Novi gets through the application process, where is it stored? Yeah. Wedge HR. Same thing in sales. Yeah. Salesforce. Yeah. If it doesn't happen in Salesforce. It didn't happen. Uh, you know okay, it. so so think about that. You, uh, Salesforce as a as a sales function, that's that's the sole sole truth. Yeah, and yeah. then you know if you take the application in terms of where's it being stored, well everything's yeah. going to be where it's going to be in every ATS. Yeah, so yeah. boom, right there, and then yes, yeah, I mean that was those are the three pillars right there in my opinion. Hundred um, percent. Well, you know what, Michael, I feel like you and I could go on about both the recruitment, but also the sales side. We should have probably a separate one just on sales and I know. Then maybe another one on improving your golf swing. But we can do another one on that one, too. Um, For sure. But, Michael, I, I really appreciate the time. This has been great. Maybe just a, a brief. This is who you are. This is what Talru does. Um, and kind of a send off for us, too. But once again, I appreciate it, man. Uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch soon after this, too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, Tauru, uh, high volume town attraction engine. So we power, you know, right now, I think, believe it's you know, like over 2 billion searches per month for organizations of the UPS, FedEx, uh, Pizza Huts of the world. Uh, and ideally, it's right job, right job seeker, right time, right place for the right price. Yeah. So uh, we're attracting and targeting different talent pools, Sean, uh, that are not that are not on the in the job boards of the world, the Indeeds mm -hmm. of the world, quite frankly, mm -hmm. and uh, very blue collar focus. And again, uh, recruiting has definitely changed over the last two to three years. Organizations have had to be more creative in terms of their recruiting strategy. So uh, diversifying, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, utilizing the job boards, utilizing pro uh, programmatic methods in terms of platforms, Taru, uh, and ultimately, when you look at top of funnel, organizations want traffic, volume, uh, a high conversion rate, a low yeah. CPA. Oh, yeah. yes. But the secret gem to our magic is the, is the quality. Yeah. So when, you in, when Tauru can increase the volume, increase the traffic, uh, ultimately we're attracting a more of a high intent job seeker. So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Self when you're attracting a more of a high intent job seeker, Sean, an organization's conversion rate is going to be completely higher. Yeah, and then yeah. ultimately, because Sean and the recruiting team are, are speaking to a more of a qualified individual, mm -hmm. that CPA is going to be lower. And uh, that's the magic. That's the magic of Tauru right there. Um, I love it. It's uh, innovative. It's new. It's making there. big waves in the industry. Um, and there are certain, uh, certainly a lot of differentiators to that. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if they're trying to get a hold of you, Michael, is, is LinkedIn the best? Yes. Yes. LinkedIn for sure. Okay. And then, uh, 
yeah, looking forward to our, our partnership, Sean. So uh, one, thank 100%. you for having us. And then, uh, yeah, looking forward to working with you in the near future. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Michael. I'll talk soon. Thanks, Sean. Bye-bye. Take care.